Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the Monday Night Market Watch for the UK and Europe. If this is your first time on the channel, we cover the other side of the pond to see how things are doing over this crazy side of the water and how we're getting on. And you can compare it to the US market. In fact, you can even compare the prices up at the top. We have a rough translation rate for the money for you. So you can have some idea of whether you're getting good bang for your buck or whether you could be getting a little bit cheaper over here, or maybe you're getting a bit cheaper where you are where you are currently in either case thank you very much for checking in if you haven't already you should most definitely be hitting subscribe especially if this is your first time on the channel if it is not what the fuck are you doing back here this is an absolute waste of your time now is your chance to get the fuck out of here before it's too late there are a few things i want to cover before we get started of course apologies if you do hear any kind of weird grunting or anything like that i have a dumbass pug which you can probably kind of see a little bit of him just poking behind the chair there it makes all kinds of funny sounds so uh you might see that or you might even see him licking his bollocks if you're really lucky normally you have to pay extra for that but for you it'll be free and uh yeah so expect a bit of that that's enough talking shit from me we're gonna get stuck right in to the market watch Okay, so the first thing to note before we get started on the video is that today is Friday the 10th of July and we've just had Battles of Legend Armageddon sort of announced by Jerome. Uh, so we have an idea of what's in the set. In fact, there was a full set list leaked before they put that video out. Uh, well, I said they, it was leaked. They leaked it themselves, which fantastic job. Uh, in any case, uh, the, the set list was out there. So of course, we're going to start to see some effect on the prices so far. We've also had a couple of cards announced in the last few days. Most prominently, we've had a new Prank Kids card announced, which actually makes a huge difference to the deck's playability. And so, of course, we're going to see some price changes on that. So we are going to be taking a look at the Prank Kids today. We're going to be taking a look at some of the cards that are printed in the Battles of Legends. So it is worth noting that I was planning to cover some of these anyway. It just so happens that that's been reiterated now by today's announcement. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff to cover, but we're going to get stuck in. So we start off with Prank Kids Place. Unsurprisingly, we've seen this absolutely shoot up. When I saw the announcement come out at first, we've seen these about three or four euros a pop, pretty cheap overall. Uh, and we're now all the way up to 13 euros is the minimum that you can get an English copy in near mint condition. 13 euros, expect that to potentially even go up as well. Bear in mind, it is a little bit away from when this set comes out, so there is time for that kind of hype to build. And don't be surprised if we see these continue to get scalped at this low level. And we see this again as like a 20, 25 pound card or 25 euros maybe uh we've seen it before when the when the deck won ycs through dinka um will it go that high again probably not quite that high but probably not far off now i wanted to take a look at some of the other secret rares from that set obviously the prank kid stuff uh prank kicks do 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 the chicken one that fucking thing that is two euros and sixty is the cheapest you're looking probably around the three euros mark, which isn't too bad to be fair. And um, but that has always been the case with this deck is that the majority of this has been really cheap. Place has been quite expensive, but I am going to look through the rest of the secrets that are in this kind of this group, uh, this archetype, just so we can get an idea of what you're going to be paying for a deck if you decide to pick up the parts now. So next we're looking at Rip Roaring Roast. So this is still really, really cheap. But again, I think it's actually one of those cards that's kind of a one of, which might be the reason that it's so cheap because the others are played in bigger multiples this is 15 cents which is absolutely buttons this may even be a good little penny stock investment if you want to pick something up really cheap that you think maybe you can churn a bit of money out of obviously there are unlimbs out on the market but i mean a first dead is is 15 cents more for your punt it's worth going for the extra of course but it'll be interesting to see how this moves on the market going forward and continuing along those lines of secret rares for Prank Kids, we've got Battle Butler here. Again, another one of those really strong cards, but isn't played in a huge amount. Normally just one or two copies maybe per deck. It is important to note that they can kind of recycle these things a little bit and do some stuff. No one really knows how the deck plays very well, and that's why Dinka won a YCS yesterday. He even said it himself. In any case, 45 cents is the going rate on these. Again, could be another really, really strong investment to pick up as a penny stock. If it doesn't get reprinted by the time this new card comes out, although there's a possibility that it does, 
then we could see these prices skyrocket. We could see them, you know, go up to five euros a pot potentially. That kind of price range is what I would maybe expect in the long run. Of course, it's a punt with any of these things, but something to maybe consider. And next up, we're looking at some of the invoked cards. It is worth noting that this is what got announced as a reprint. Uh, these were actually like kind of crazy high considering, uh, you know, it's not anything particularly new. And the deck isn't really seeing a lot of play at the moment. But it's one of those things where it's such a small engine and you can fit it in with so many other decks. It's also important to note that this has really good synergy with Dragma, which if you haven't seen my video on that, you should definitely check it out. I may even pop one of them little linky things so you can click on it on the screen. In any case... This has a really good synergy with that, and it is one of those decks that will continue to have synergy because of the size of the engine. It can go in so much stuff, and it'll, you know, from format to format, it's always at least playable. Uh, and so the cards were quite expensive, all things considered. And now we're seeing a reprint of this. I wanted to see how that was affecting the prices of the Invoke cards that are out there. So we're looking at the secret rare copy of Perga Trio, traditionally one of the slightly more expensive cards. Uh, these are currently sat around five euros a pop, but don't be surprised if we start to see these creep down a little bit. Um, although my overall prediction with these is that the higher rarity invoke stuff is going to push up because the demand will increase. But that kind of mid-range stuff will probably drop because people will be happy to just cheap out with the cheapest options. And the people that want the best options will pay the extra for the high-end stuff. So that's probably how I expect the market to move. Again, it's just an early prediction and we won't know really until the set's out. Of course, you'll get hype at first and then it'll probably die down. What I will say is a Battles of Legend is usually one of those sets that nobody gives a fuck about. It gets opened into oblivion and then shortly afterwards the cards run out of print. And the prices shoot up. There's always one or two cards in the set. So don't be shocked if that happens in this one too. Next we move on to Raijin. Another one of those cards that's just held a little bit of value for no apparent reason. Uh, it's sat at 4 euros at the moment. Between 4 and 5 euros for the secret rare. Again the possibility that it comes down is definitely a thing to consider. Um, and we're going to go ahead and continue to look through the fusion options. And some of the other cards as well. Mechaba in secret rare, six euros a pop at the moment, although they are seem to be kind of getting scalped down there, and most of these are 10 euros and above. I think that that overall price potentially is going to go up, go up because this is the one that kind of goes in, well, basically every deck that can play an invoked engine normally finds a way to fit this in because it's arguably the strongest option that you've got in that extra deck, and unsurprisingly, it holds value in kind. Next, we're looking at secret rare copies of Invocation. This will be the fourth printing of the card that's coming out. So we're probably going to see those lower rarity ones drop down. I think the secrets will, they will come down a bit, but they'll still hold a reasonable value. Of course, ultis is going to be the one to watch because they are potentially going to skyrocket. And we'll check that out in a moment. Currently, you can get secrets for around 20 euros a pop. Again, I do think that's going to come down. We're probably going to see it head towards the maybe 10 to 12 mark, if I was to guess. But it is a guesstimate, of course, like all of these things. And we're going to go ahead and look at the ulti version now. So the ultimate rare, of course, has always held good value. Anyway, it's become one of those collector cards. And of course, like I say, it's one of those archetypes that can be splashed so much that there's always going to be playability. And that is what we see in the price 85 euros for the cheapest 94 95 even 100 euros from there onwards potentially we're going to see that creep up even more where demand for this card will increase over time next we're moving on to alistair i didn't look at the super rare because i do think that, that will stay about where it is the secret however i think is one to watch and potentially the fact that you can get these for around one euro 20 anywhere between that and two euros it might be a really good pickup because we're potentially going to see these up to go up towards the 7, 8 euro mark. Especially once Battle Surgeon comes out and the demand for this increases, this card will spike. I'm almost certain of it. And if you want to put your money into anything, this might not be a bad shout. It's also worth noting that this isn't getting reprinted in that set. At least it's not confirmed and I believe we've seen the whole set so far. So don't expect Alice to get in a better rarity anytime soon. And so the secret rare version is likely to spike up. Speaking of Alistair, want to potentially watch the Invoker of Madness still on its singular print. We haven't seen a reprint for this yet, and it's currently 18 euros a pop. Don't be surprised again if this spikes up, maybe towards the 25 mark. We've seen it there before, especially if the deck starts to see some playability. Again, no confirmed reprints for this at this stage. It was in a side set, so it's even harder to find and kind of pull. Uh, and again, although it is only played as a one-off, it's one of those cards that will see some amount of play, and the demand for this may potentially push the price up. Next, I wanted to take a look at some of the legendary Duelist cards. I wanted to kind of mark how they've been doing 
initially when we covered them, of course, you get that initial hype of where everything's getting cracked. Things are all over the place. I want to see how things were starting to settle now. Millennium Eyes Restrict unsurprisingly starting to creep up. I did expect that this might happen. Uh, this is currently the highest rarity printed. Not necessarily the rarest version, but definitely the highest rarity. And so we will continue to see that price creep up. Red Eyes Baby Dragon, another one that comes from one of those cult decks. People love Red Eyes because... They think Blue Eyes and, and Dark Magician are too mainstream, so they want the edgy Red Eyes deck. Well, Red Eyes sucks. Red Eyes sucks, let's just get that out there now for you. But in either case, €3.50 is not too bad for the Baby Dragon version. It's something you probably want to pick up for that collection. It's a really nice looking card in the rarities. Cool new if you are one of those people that's sort of into that Red Eyes thing, then this is good for you, I guess. Next, we're looking at Ancient Gear Fusion. Another one I expect that will hold some sort of value. Maybe not crazy, but it was really high before for no apparent reason. Uh, currently, five euros a pop potentially could go up again in the long run. I'm still not convinced that this is one of these packs that people are busting open. And I can see long term that these cards could potentially go up in value a little bit. Especially the ones with the alternate rarities and that kind of thing. Different color writing, potential collector value there to consider. But Ancient Gear Fusion in any case is about five euros a pop. So if you are thinking about picking this up, now is probably a good a time as any. Speaking of Red Eyes, we finally got it with its proper name printed on there. For some reason they were scared to do it before. Uh, and something crazy has happened in the world and now well, okay to use it, guys. Don't worry. It's all good. In any case, Red Eyes Black Dragon is back with its full and proper name. No shortening, I might add. And €2.25. I can actually see people trying to pick this up just because they want the correct name in their deck. Um, €2.25 for an ultra rare with alternate colored writing. And it's actually, it's, it's nice. I mean, I think the original artwork is nicer. I'm just going to throw that out there. But it still looks pretty cool. And uh, if I was going to play Red Eyes, which I wouldn't because the deck sucks, but we won't go into that, then this would be maybe the one I consider picking up. What I would add, though, is that potentially we're going to see the price go up with Dragoon around the corner. So something potentially to consider as another one of those penny stock options, I guess. There's so many prints out there, but there's a potential additional market for this one because of the correct name. And now we're moving on to some of the cards from Toon Chaos. Not too many of them. I just wanted to cover a few and see how things are shaping up there. So we start off with Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, One of the ones I got to announce on my video. If you haven't seen that, you should probably go back and watch it just because, because it's me and do the right thing. In any case, €19.50 is the going rate. Potentially something that could start to creep up a little bit once Rise of the Duelist is in the immediate future. It is coming. It's not very far away. But... There's a little bit of hype tailing off, and I think that we may see that pick back up once it is closer to printing. And Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed will be one of those cards that does creep up. I don't think it's going to go much higher than it is now, maybe around the 25 euro mark. Currently, they're around 20 euros, so it might not be a bad pickup. There is, of course, a danger that it does drop quite significantly. And given that there is a better printing than this out there, it may be something that does happen. And on that rabbit hole of Infernoble Knights, we've got here Renaud, 20 euros is the minimum. Uh, they're all around that 20 to 22 mark. I think that the hype is going to die down on this one a little bit as well. It is one of those important cards for the deck as a whole, but is it 20, 25 euro card? I'm not really convinced that that's right, and I think that we may see it dip down. There is, of course, a possibility that the deck comes out of the woodwork and is absolutely insane from the get-go and if that does happen of course this will skyrocket although i'm not convinced and continuing with toon chaos we've got chaos space one that i'd actually predicted may go up and it may yet go up depending on how things shape up down the line it is important to note that we've essentially got an unlimited print that we know is coming out but it's not towards the tail end of the year now whatever happens with events may dictate how the price of this fluctuates i feel like if Competitive play comes back sooner rather than later, at least across Europe as a whole, that we're going to see these spike up really soon. If that doesn't happen, though, then they're not going to go up. The Unlim is going to come out, and these are just going to tank in value. It is a really cool card to pick up, though, and I think even at €4.79, €15 Euros a playset, it's still a really, really good price to pick this up at, and something you should probably just have in your binder in any case. Next is one that I need to add to my own collection because I want to be able to do some really cool Chaos profiles, and, of course, being a Lightswarm goon, 
there's always that kind of synergy going on there. So inevitably, I want to play it at some point. But Chaos Creator, uh, the price is yo-yoing up and down. A lot of people are picking this up, but only at sort of one and two copies. So because it's not really a three of, I think that that's part of the reason the price has stifled. Although we have seen it yo-yo all the way between there and sort of 25 euros a pop. I do think that this will settle maybe a little bit lower than it is now, maybe around 15 or so. Uh, and of course, we know that we're going to get that other print coming out down the line this is a really cool card to pick up though if it's something you want to use it's probably worth just paying the extra you know few euros on the gamble because there's probably more chance that it goes up than it comes down at a guess and next we're just looking at some random cards that i felt like looking at just to see how they're getting on appalooza we know that we've got a reprint coming out for this unfortunately it will be in gold rest and nobody's going to want to play it apart from people that we don't like very much who are going to shine it in our eyes and blind us at tournaments but in any case we're going to use our proper rarity ones a minimum of secret rare ideally you want to play starlight but not everyone's got the p for that we understand 58 euros is the going rate on appalooza at the moment unsurprisingly still holding a really good value because you need it. you need it in your binder you need it in your extra deck and that keeps the prices up staples are always more expensive and we know that the gold rares are going to be absolutely cheap as chips and everyone is going to want a minimum of a secret rare that will be the main one you see being played not everyone can flex with starlight so secrets will continue to hold a good amount of playability and therefore a good value now do i think it'll stay above the 50 euro mark highly unlikely we're probably going to see it dip down until another reprint comes out but for now i think that this is a really good good card to have access to if it's something that you don't want to use and you don't mind settling for something cheaper then probably cash in now before the price does start to dip down Eldritch the Golden Lord absolutely takes the piss. 300 euros to get yourself a nice playset of this card. That's at the cheapest. You're potentially looking up towards the 350 mark for a playset, which is just mind-boggling to me. Although it is a pretty safe investment. I have said this multiple times, and I will say it again for those of you who are unaware. Eldritch is unlikely to be touched on a ban list anytime soon. There's no theory in this other than the fact that it's not fucking broken. It's not broken. It's just really strong. And in fact, most of the busted cards surrounding it are likely to get hit because they're busted in every other deck as well. Things like these synchro plays and stuff like that, which means Eldritch will continue to be a safe playable deck for some time. If I was to put my money on any deck, if I was a gambling man, then I would put money on this deck being around for a while. It is also worth noting that there's some synergy there with Dragma, which will be more support for the deck if you want to play that variant. And I think that we'll continue to see that experimentation. And as a result, I think that this is a really safe bet if you want a deck that's going to be playable for at least the next year of competitive events here we have one of the blue eyes that i don't own and this pisses me off a little bit because it's really expensive nobody has it 150 euros at minimum if anyone has one out there feel free to send it to me uh, i'll send you feet pics or something i don't know if that's what you're into whatever we'll, we'll make a plan we'll make a plan i need one of these someone hook me up earthbound ass ftk this motherfucker thank god people aren't actually playing this shit this was absolutely dumb fortunately i've not had to run into it or well, seen anyone playing it online the one or two people i have were fucking bad and didn't know how to play the decks so that was fine i didn't have to suffer the consequences but i did want to go ahead and take a look and see how these are doing because naturally people will now start flooding the market hoping to cash in on this card before the hype dies off and if you haven't seen how this whole ftk works go check out the disciples they have some mathematics going on there some crazy stuff that explains how insane this ftk is and weirdly people still aren't playing it maybe it's just because people don't like ftks all that much who knows in any case ultimate rares minimum of 20 euros just for good condition if you want near mint 23 euros and let's have a little look further down and see what the better stuff is saying So a minimum of 40 euros for something in first ed, near mint in, you know, looking fantastic and dapper. Uh, for an ulti, it's not too bad, to be fair. Ultis can hold a lot better value than this, as we've seen. It is also an old ulti, so it's worth noting that as well. And usually they do have some crazy value. We are going to look at one of the cheaper prints of this card, though, just to see how that's getting on with the secret rare. So let's go and have a look at that now. So as the Pisku, if you want it in good condition in Secret Rare, you're looking around, I don't know, 12 euros is the cheapest here, but probably towards the 20, 25 mark. Um, and for anything in near mint, you are looking more towards a 30, potentially even 40 euro mark. It is worth noting that there's very, very few of these out there in Secret Rare. So potentially one that we're going to see get bought out in the near future. And hopefully by the time you see this video, if you decided you want a copy of this, there'll still be some left. And our final card for today, one that just sort of popped into my head 
uh, and I just wanted to see how it was getting on in the market. I was actually expecting it to be much further down than it is for something in first edition in near mint 25 euros. It's actually still a crazy good value. Probably the reason is because it survived the master rule change uh, and unsurprisingly so because it's a really, really good utility card and it is one that is going to continue to see play for the foreseeable future. This is one of those kind of standard Link 2s that you're going to go to in the majority of decks and as a result we see that in the price 25 euros at a minimum that is for first edition there are plenty more of course being hiked up all the way down to 50 euros for some reason someone chancing it i guess uh american print whatever 25 euros is not too bad they've held really good value so if you are someone that picked yours up for cheaper than that like me then you did pretty good after all and that is it for today's Market Watch. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, of course, make sure you've hit subscribe. Uh, we do these every single Monday, so you're going to see more and more of this. If there's any cards you'd like me to cover, certainly drop them down in the comments. Find me on social media. I am easy enough to find out there. And of course, this isn't the only content that we do on the channel. I do lots of deck profiles, combo tutorials. Most prominently at the moment, I'm doing how to play videos with the kind of competitive scene being off. I want people to be ready to go back into the game with the basic understanding of a variety of decks and they seem to be doing quite well so we're going to continue to do those if there's other types of content you'd also like to see definitely reach out and let me know either way thank you very much for checking in guys if you haven't already once again you most definitely should hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility thanks again for checking in and i'll see you in the next one